Hello, welcome or welcome back to the Yarn and Yarns YouTube channel. My name is Angela and all of the places you can find me should be linked in the description box below this video. Um, here on the channel you'll find me chatting about my adventures in all of the fibre related things and sometimes a few other bits and pieces but mostly fibre crafts here at Yarn and Yarns. Um, today's video is all about my June making wrap up so the things that I worked on or the things that I finished during the month of June. Um, I have, what do I have? I have knitting, spinning and some weaving to share with you. So yeah, that's all included in today's video. So I hope you'll stick with me, um, grab your current project or a nice drink and settle in as I waffle on about my projects. Um, first, I just want to make a weather disclaimer. <laughs> I'm not sure if you can hear in the background, um, but it's pouring down with rain. So I'm not sure how much that's picking up on the um, audio, but I apologise if you can hear it but it's quite nice to have some rain we've had some quite hot and humid days here in South Wales and actually 10 minutes ago the sun was out and shining brightly and now it's pouring with rain summer in Wales what can you do <laughs> um, I'm just going to hope that it makes up its mind weather wise for the rest of the day um, but if we do have um, a few weird light issues then it could be just the weather change and um, yeah so we're just gonna go with it this is the time that I have to record so let's dive right in um, I think I will start with knitting this week uh, I've got a few finished objects to share with you and one work in progress and my finished objects are very sock heavy this month which um, is quite fun for me because um, sock mojo has been um, somewhat lacking um, here over the last few months um, but started to slowly come back when I recently finished my rice pudding socks um, which were a lovely pair of socks that I showed off in the last episode as I just cast them off um, and the rice pudding socks are designed by the lovely Caroline of the Colourful Creativity uh, podcast here on YouTube. But yeah my sock mojo started to creep back somewhat um, with the rice pudding socks and it's kind of continued ever since so that is fantastic. First in the sock parade are the socks that I have been knitting for our um, socks for west midlands ambulance appeal and um, i have several videos on this topic my lovely friend jeanette is trying to collect several hundred pairs yes hundred pairs <laughs> of socks for um gifting to the lovely staff at one of the hubs of the west midlands ambulance service and um so lots of lovely folks in the community here have donated yarn and are knitting socks and the yarn that's been donated um, I've been having cranked up into tubes by the lovely Charlie who is Cranky Lady um, and I am adding heels, toes and cuffs to uh, those uh, sock tubes. So um, in the month of June I managed to finish five pairs of socks um, for donation. So I'm going to quickly show um, them off to you now, um, but I won't dwell too much because um, as I have been doing um, throughout the rest of the year so far, I will have um, a sort of dedicated update video to um, this sock project. So I'll just quickly flash the socks that I have finished here. Um, so I've got this pair um, from West Yorkshire Spinners in the pheasant colourway and I used some um, lovely blue to knit the contrast heels toes and cuffs for those um, from the same tube I made two pairs of socks um, and for the second pair I used this lovely burgundy as the contrast so um, I think it's quite fun to see these um, colorways with the different contrasting colors and how um, that kind of look affects the overall look of the sock um, so yeah two pairs um, from the pheasant colorway um, I also have two pairs from this lovely green um, colour which again is another West Yorkshire Spinners but I can't remember the colourway um, off the top of my head. Um, the first pair that I um, made up from the tubes uh, I used this contrast pink, this really bright pink which is blowing out quite nicely on the camera and is very clashy with me and my wall. <laughs> I feel like I'm a bit camouflaged today. <laughs> I've actually used this colour in my current weaving which I'll chat about later and I have the rest of the ball hanging around and um, it happened to sort of set down beside this uh, really fun green colour and I really liked the contrast of the bright pink with these bright greens and um, when I posted a picture on Instagram someone said that it reminded them of a watermelon and I can definitely see that. Um, so yeah I have those pair and then I made two pairs from that tube as well and the second pair I toned down um, and used green um, so let me just hold up one of the pinks and one of the greens so you can see um, how uh, sort of different those colours play together and what a difference it makes to the finished socks. Um, so yeah, two pairs from that green colour 
and then finally I need to reach over to my other bag um, I have a pair of blue socks and I've made these a pair of um, sort of long knee-high socks for larger feet um, and it's this lovely blue colorway um, which I think may have been a drops colorway um, I'm kind of losing track now of um, all of the lovely yarns that have been donated but I think this was a drops um, colorway and for these longer socks um, I tend to unravel a couple of inches of the tube and knit the cuff and the toes from the same colour so the socks don't get hugely long um, although these are still really quite long and then I did the um, navy blue for the heels in those so yeah I've got two of those to make a pair of lovely long socks for donation so yeah five pairs ready to go off to Jeanette at some point um, but I'm going to save those up for a little while and wait till I've got a box full um, to send to uh, Jeanette before I send them away uh, so yeah all the socks for uh, the West Midlands Ambulance Service and then I finished two pairs of socks for me um, one pair of shorty summer socks and a pair that's already on my blockers so I shall show you those um, and if you watched my vlog that went up last week you'll have already seen these socks these are the red robin socks um, a pattern from curious handmade um, and I knit these as part of my um, someone else chooses my project uh, series of videos that I have recently started here on YouTube um, so I'm not going to dwell on these too much because if you are interested then you can find a whole vlog dedicated to me out and about uh, knitting these in the sunshine at the beach so even if you're not particularly interested in sock knitting um, you might want to watch that vlog for the scenery because I go on a coast path walk and I'm at the beach a couple of times and out in the garden a few times uh, so yeah there's lots of outside knitting <laughs> involved in the making of these socks um, but these were chosen um, for me to knit by one of our lovely community members the lovely Jenny and I had so much fun knitting these I used some curio stitches um, in the druid colorway for the main color and I used um, a leftover um, from stitch please um, in a colorway called the blood of thine enemy which is highly amusing or at least to me <laughs> Uh, so yes, these were my red robin socks, a really fun, um, kind of simple texture um, on the socks, but it was just a pure joy to knit these, and I do have two as proof. <laughs> uh, so yes, those were knit during the month of June. Um, let's pop those off the blockers and get a shorty sock on there. I don't think these probably really need to be shown off on the blockers to be honest but I shall pop one on there anyway um so a few weeks ago um, my dear friend Sherry who has the Twisted Dye Kitchen podcast here um, on YouTube um, reached out to me and said that she had some leftover yarn um, some Patton's Croy um, sock yarn and I absolutely adored um, knitting a pair of blue stripe rag socks um, which is a particular colourway from Patton's um, from some yarn that was gifted to me by my dear friend Erin and um, so when Sherry reached out to me and said she had some leftovers and some unwanted um, patterns croy in her stash um, and she would be happily send it to me um, if I was happy to pay postage then I um, completely leapt at that chance um, and one of the balls that she sent me was um, not a complete ball um, but uh, so the patterns croy comes in 50 grams um, so I decided to pair that with a another colour um, and make myself a pair of short summer socks so these are they and as you can see I've been employing <laughs> the use of that bright pink again um, the pink I don't think I mentioned before is a skein from Opal just one of their uni colours and I really loved how um, it was kind of a little bit clashy with the kind of colours in the pattern scroll so the pattern scroll um, I've started to stripe in the um, opal as we get back down to the bottom of the sock there because I was running out of yarn um, but if I sort of cover that you can see this is kind of the um, pattern scroll sort of striping uh, selection of colours there so there's greens there's a bit of red in there there's some blues and yeah I just thought it was really fun to um, add that pop of pink in for the heel and then as I say I striped it in um, towards the toe for um, 
finishing off these socks and I'm absolutely desperate for some more short socks in my collection. Um, these are loosely based on I think the Rose City roller pattern. Uh, you basically cast on and you don't do a rib, you just let it sort of roll over and then you pop in your heel of choice and um, knit down your normal sort of foot recipe. Uh, so yeah those are my um, summer shorty socks and as I say um, now the weather has warmed up I still like to wear my wool socks in my trainers and I go for a walk pretty much every day I've got three pairs of useful um, short socks in my stash at the moment I've got one pair that's um, I've already darned a couple of times that I knit from merino yarn um, and I think they're probably ready for the compost to be honest um, I've darned them quite a few times now and they've sprung holes again and I've got one more pair but I've got um, one of the socks is missing at the moment so I've kind of only got three pairs that I'm wearing and washing quite frequently throughout the week um, so my goal is so this is the fourth usable pair unless I can find my odd sock floating around somewhere um, and my thought is I think through July and August I will knit um, a pair another pair each month for myself um, to build out my short sock collection um, but yeah I really enjoyed um, this as a way to use up one of those beautiful skeins um, of Patton's Croy that was sent to me by the lovely Sherry. Yes, those were June's sock adventures and um, I only worked on one other project um, apart from those sock projects throughout June um, and that project still remains a work in progress so I shall share that with you now. This project has not been featured here on my channel for quite some time although it has been one of my works in progress in my queue for absolutely ages now um i think this if i remember rightly this was one of my 12 cast ons um not from this year not from last year but from the year before <laughs> and um i know there's at least one person out there uh, if you're watching this fee of flourish fibers for some reason i always think of you when i start knitting this project because um, i know when i've shown this project off um a few times in the past um, you've always been championing me to get it done because uh, you said that you're interested in seeing this one knit up so um, I have returned to knitting my Aliba Linde um, sweater which is a project from uh, Pom Pom I'm keeping it in this was probably the first ever project bag that I made for myself uh, so yeah the sweater is from Pom Pom Quarterly back in autumn 2017 and it's a beautiful um, all over textured um, sweater um, I think the photos kind of show it, but they're a little bit dark, I think. Uh, I think you can see it better in the red here. So it's textured up till just um, past the armhole um, separation, and then it's plain, and then you've got a plain sleeve with a little bit of the texture pattern on the bottom. Um, so yeah, I have been knitting happily away on this, um, a row or two here and there throughout June, and I'm happy to say I've made quite some reasonable progress. So here is the progress that I've made on my project. I'm using um, two yarns from Mahoodley, who I don't think is dying at the moment. Um, I purchased these back when I went to a yarn show in London a couple of years ago, um, specifically for a sweater, though I didn't have a sweater pattern in mind, um, but I just fell in love with these colours. And I think this was um, possibly my first ever sort of big um, indie dyed um, sort of sweater quantity of yarn that I purchased so I invested invested some money in this so um, it definitely deserves to be finished and I've although the project has been sat in my queue um, sort of languishing um, I've never felt the urge to frog it like sometimes when I um, leave a project in my um, sort of languishing pile for a while um, I get to the point where um, I realise I don't want that project anymore and just rip it out um, but this one was never in danger of being ripped out I've always always wanted to finish this jumper um, I just think that part of me had convinced myself that this project was a lot more complicated than it actually is um, so as I say um, it's got this all over sort of um, texture pattern um, which is made by um, different combinations of knit stitches and purl stitches and then there are a couple of rows in each pattern repeat that have like the um, sort of twisted stitches so basically a two stitch cable um, in effect and for some reason in my head I think I had made this um, into a project that I thought was going to be more effort than it actually is 
Um, don't get me wrong, the rows are quite slow because um, I think it's a 12 row pattern repeat. Two of those rows are plain knit rows. Um, the other 10 rows you are employing, as I say, a combination of knits and pearls or twisted stitches. Um, so each individual row is fairly slow, um, but the pattern repeat is fairly intuitive um, and once you get into the rhythm of each row, the rows are, you know, not constantly referring to a chart or anything like that. So it's not as complicated as I had somehow built it up to be in my head. Um, so when I picked this project up, and I picked it up on a whim, um, I was just looking for something um, a little bit more complicated than um, my sock projects. I needed those sock projects, particularly at the start of the month where we were having our roof repair work done. Um, I was quite tired, there were lots of comings and goings and um, I needed simple knitting. So those sock projects kind of um, saw me through that. Um, once we come out of that, I kind of wanted to carry on with the socks because I was kind of, you know, in, in the flow with those. But I also wanted a, something else to engage my brain a little bit. Um, and that's why I reached for this project. Uh, so when I picked this project up, um, I've got a little marker here. This was um, what had been knit. Um, on the project previously. Um, so throughout the month of June, um, as you can see, I have made quite some progress. And I think I have two and a half more pattern repeats to go um, before I, or the before the pattern tells you to split for the sleeves. Um, so I think um, this part here, at the bottom here, is about two pattern repeats. So I've got sort of this much more to add uh, to the top of the sweater. So another few inches. Um, and then I shall be ready to uh, split uh, for the for the sleeves so yeah I'm really pleased with my progress I absolutely adore this gorgeous colour um, and I'm definitely motivated to continue working on this it's actually quite nice um, to work on once you get into the flow of each row um, yeah as I say it's, there's quite a nice rhythm to it so yeah I'm really happy to be working on that long languishing project and at the moment, I mean, there's still a lot of knitting left to do. It's a um, four ply sweater in um, my size and I'm knitting the largest size in this book. This, this pattern was in an issue of Pom Pom before Pom Pom really got um, completely size inclusive. Um, so I'm knitting the 52 inch size, which is the biggest size. It's meant to be two to four inches of positive ease. Um, I do tend to sort of fluctuate between uh, like a 50 and a 52 um, for my chest size um, depending on um, where we are in the month how much of a glutton I've been <laughs> all those kind of things um, so in theory this will give me no ease um, but in practice I'm quite a loose knitter so I reckon this will be a couple of inches of positive ease um, on the chest for me so hopefully it will um, be a nice um, sort of comfortable fit when it's finished. Uh, so yeah, I'm kind of motivated to continue working on that. Um, however, um, you know what I'm like, I can be quite fickle and who knows what will happen when we get to the end of July. <laughs> will I still be working on this? I guess we'll all tune in to find out. <laughs> so that's everything that I have for knitting. Um, however, um, I do have a couple of pairs of finished socks um, in amongst my projects this month and I also have the rice pudding socks which I finished at the end of last month um, so I think we might have um, a little bit of a happy dance montage to lead us out of the knitting section.
to chat about weaving now I think. Um, I have a woven project in progress. I don't have it up here to share with you. Um, it's attached to my loom at the moment and I had um, quite a few things to drag up the stairs to chat to you about today. Um, so I left my bulky loom downstairs but I'll pop in a little bit of a video um, sharing the project that I have on my loom um, at the moment and um, I will chat to you about that as I'm showing it to you. So here we are, this is the project that I have on my loom uh, this month, I've started working on it. Um, it hasn't progressed as quickly as I had hoped it would, but um, I'm hoping that I might get this finished this week um, because it really won't take um, that much longer if I actually sit down and concentrate on it. So I'm having a go at a technique called clasp weft weaving, um, where I'm basically employing the use of two colours. Um, and I decided as well as using two colours to make the weft of my um, woven piece, I would also warp up with two different colours. Um, my thought process for that was that um, if I used um, pink on um, the side from which I'm feeding in my pink yarn, that would hopefully um, make the sort of pink saturation a little bit deeper um, and then grey on the grey side. Um, it's worked to a certain extent, um, however my yarns that I'm using for my weft are hand spun um, and the colour is slightly variegated so I think you can see it in the sort of pinky purple side more than in the grey. Um, so yeah it hasn't quite had um, sort of as big an impact as maybe it might otherwise have done. Uh, so yeah, um, I have been getting stuck into this. Um, it's a much trickier technique than I thought. I'm, I'm struggling a little bit um, for a few different reasons and I may make a separate video um, about my um, project uh, just so I can chat a bit more about it in depth. Um, but yeah, there's a few issues going on with <laughs> this project. Um, my edges, particularly on this side where I'm feeding the pink in, um, are a little bit uneven, although some of that is going to be to do with the fact that my hand spun is a little bit thick and thin in places. Um, I'm also having a few issues where um, the clasp join um, is a little bit bobbly, but I need to, just to probably slow down and take a bit more time to get that right. And then um, through the weaving, uh, there's a few sort of twists. Um, you're basically weaving a double strand with each sort of pass um, of your shuttle. So yeah, a few different things that have um, sort of cropped up as I've been working on this project. Um, I'm <laughs> hoping, I've got this weird bit of um, string hanging on um, to the side here. I'm actually hoping to weave this um, into a big enough piece for a cushion cover. Um, so I'm using, uh, I've pinned this on, um, I've measured out a piece of yarn that's more or less the width of um, my warp and I'm going to weave um, up the same distance to try and make a sort of a square piece of fabric and hopefully I'll have enough hand spun to make a back and a front um, for this piece of weaving. Um, but yeah, there we go. That is what I have been working on on my um, rigid head or loom this month. Uh, so yes, um, it's turning out to be a slightly slower project than I anticipated, but I'm finding the clasp weft um, a little bit more challenging than, than I thought, but that's always good. It's always good to stretch ourselves and learn new things. Um, I think I love, I love learning new things. And that's one of the things that I absolutely um, adore about playing around with fibre. Um, I was chatting to James about it actually when we were out on a work, walk earlier um, this week, one evening. Um, there's just so much to learn. Um, knitting techniques, crochet techniques, um, weaving is a whole new ball game for me, um, spinning, um, I mean spinning is just, uh, there's so many different types of fibre and um, spinning techniques, um, yeah I just love that these crafts are fun um, but they also challenge me and they keep my brain active and they're a way for me to um, constantly um, push myself to um, learn new things, so yeah love it. <laughs> 
Um, and talking about spinning, um, our final section for today is spinning. So um, we are in the midst of Tour de Fleece as I am chatting today. So um, the first week is just coming to an end. Um, I did pop a video up over on my Patreon channel. Um, if you're interested in joining the Yarn and Yarns Patreon and supporting the work that I do here, um, you can hop on over using the link below and you can sign up to the Patreon community um, for as little as one pounds per month um, and each month at the moment I post at least one extra video over there um, and if the community over on Patreon grows then I have committed to um, start to post um, more sort of exclusive Patreon only content over there so um, yeah my Patreon video this month was chatting all about my summer spinning plans um, I'm participating in Tour de Fleece um, I'm also hoping to participate in the lovely um, spin and make along being hosted by Alex of Late Night Knits she's hosting a bat to hats make along um, so you basically spin up a bat of fibre which is a type of fibre preparation um, and aim to spin the fibre and then knit a hat with it um, and then the final summer spin along that I am taking part in is being hosted by the lovely Rachel of Welford Pearls and um, in conjunction with Mars of Hay Brown Berry they are hosting a summer sp a spindle spun summer <laughs> it's three s's I keep getting them in the wrong order so yeah basically the idea is to spin as much on spindles as possible and if you have followed the channel for any length of time you know um, I'm very passionate about spindle spinning I just love it love it um, but yeah if you want some more detailed um, insight into the projects that I'll be working on um, then you can hop on over and join the patreon community for that video uh, so yes um let's chat about all things spinning um we might as well chat to tour de fleece first um i'm in the midst of spinning up some beautiful fiber from um john arbon I, that i purchased during the virtual wonderwall weekend and um i have spun through i've got 500 grams of fiber in total um tour de fleece lasts for three weeks i'm not expecting that i will spin through the full 500 grams that i've purchased um, i'm hoping to spin a sweater from 500 grams we'll, we shall see if that works out or not um, i'm not expecting to spin the whole 500 grams um but i'm going to work through as much as possible um so for this first week i have managed to spin through the first 100 grams of fiber um which i have wound off i'm spinning it on my haldane um shetland which is a treadle wheel a vintage treadle wheel um and i have spun the first 100 grams and then i've wound it off onto one of these beautiful um 3d printed bobbins that um uh, were so very kindly printed um for me by the lovely um husband of caroline of colorful creativity um so yeah 100 grams of fiber spun um i should have brought up some of the unspun fiber to share with you because i'll pop a picture in actually to show you the difference between what the fiber looks like before it gets spun up and the results that you get so yeah i'll pop that in now Um, so yeah, I don't know about you, but um, I'm quite surprised at the um, sort of colour that you get from what looks like quite a brightly coloured um, sort of fun, almost like rainbow um, striped fibre. It all kind of melds and mutes into this beautiful colour, which kind of reads quite green to me um, on the spindle and I th on the bobbin. And I think it knits up quite green as well. I've got a small um, swatch to show you from some of the sampling that I've done, but it's almost um, sort of like one of those oil slick kind of um, colourways. And I just think it's absolutely beautiful. Uh, so yeah before I embarked on my spin I did a, a little bit of um, swatching and I spun up a tiny little bit and knit up a little bit just to, to see what sort of yarn I would get and this is my little swatch um, and I did two swatches actually this one is a two ply um, and this one is a three ply and I'm actually going to go with a two ply yarn because I really like how this one feels and how this one has knit up um, and yeah I think it just has knit up absolutely beautifully and I'm really excited to work my way through that and see how much um, I end up with. The challenge is going to be um, how consistently can I spin the singles. And um, the fibre is a really interesting combination of silk, Wensleydale, um, Blueface Leicester and Exmoor Blueface. So there are quite a few different blends in there. Um, but it's blended beautifully and it's spinning up nicely. Um, it's just down to... Um, spinning wheel operator i.e me as to how consistently i can 
<laughs> get 500 grams spun up over the course of the next several weeks. As I mentioned, we are mid the first week of Tour de Vlies and my main goal is to spin through as much of this John Arban fibre as possible. Um, but midweek, I got a little bit distracted. This week has been quite a funny week for me. Um, I've not been feeling the best um, and that is mostly due to the fact I've been suffering from a bout of insomnia. It happens to me every now and then. It's kind of a semi-regular thing and I know I will come out of the other end of it at some point. Um, but I think on Tuesday or Wednesday, um, I was wide awake still at 3 a.m. and I didn't know what to do with myself. <laughs> Um, so I was watching some YouTube videos as you do and um, I was watching a video from um, The Passionate Spinner, I'm a member of her Patreon community and she popped up a video um, about spinning um, singles, intentionally spinning single yarn and um, the sort of crux of her video was to try and spin slightly thicker singles um, to use um, in a project and I just felt immediately inspired that I needed to start some um, singles spinning. Um, so I crept up to <laughs> my craft attic, James was asleep, um, in the middle of the night and grabbed myself a braid from my fibre stash. I keep glancing over here because my fibre stash is right next to me. Um, it wasn't a braid off of my cart because um, I didn't know exactly how this yarn was going to turn out or what I had in mind for it in sort of intention wise. I just felt inspired to start and I didn't want to think about it too much. So I grabbed a braid of fibre that had been um, languishing my stash for quite some time um, and it is from Yarny Love and I don't know if they're dying anymore I tried to look them up it seems they've got a Facebook page but there's been no activity on the page for um, a year or so so I'm going to assume they're not dying at the moment um, but I believe that I purchased this in a sale from Yarny Love um, maybe even before I really started spinning um, I had the idea that I wanted to start um, drop spindling and um, I purchased a drop spindle kit um, from Hilltop Cloud and then it purchased a few braids of fibre and then it was quite some time before I actually got into spinning itself, worked up the courage <laughs> to pick up those tools. Uh, so yeah, this has been in my stash for ages um, and this was a 100 grams of um, Shetland fibre um, dyed in um, the berry colourway, um, a beautiful combination of pinks and blues and um, I spun up the 100 gram braid into some um, yarn, intentional singles. So I'm going to be leaving it as is. I'm not going to ply it at all. And um, yeah, I spun through this. I think I spun up um, the first almost 50 grams in um, about an hour between three and 4 a.m. And then I finally felt like I might be able to get some sleep um, and then spun the rest up the next day. Um, so yeah, a really quick um, and kind of fun spin, um, exactly what I needed to <laughs> get me through um, my night of insomnia. Um, my singles definitely need working on. I mean, I know that just from my sort of general spinning, um, but the good thing about spinning is oftentimes when you ply your yarn, um, it can disguise some of the inconsistencies, not all of them, but some of the inconsistencies. Um, but singles really, I think, highlight um, your skill when it comes to consistency if that's how you want to spin your singles because some people um, are not aiming for consistency they want their yarns to be thick and thin um, but my aim was to try and spin as consistently as possible and if I hold that up to you I think you'll be able to see there are definitely thicker spots um, there are some really fine spots um, I think particularly towards the end of the spin it was really hard um, to try and spin intentionally a little bit thicker than I'm used to I'm most often trying to um, spin the thinnest um, single that I can and I think that stems from the fact that um, a bit like my stash of yarn is quite a lot of um, single skeins of sock yarn my stash of fibre is quite a lot of single braids of 100 gram fibre so in order to make those um, sort of single braids go as far as possible I'm often striving to spin some really fine singles to make the most of what I have and it's really hard to break that habit and actually in the video that I was watching from the passionate spinner um, she was saying that actually once you learn to spin thin um, it's quite easy to continue on that path um, but it's quite a skill to come back to spinning thicker again and I think there's definitely something in that um, drafting more fibre each time um, and consistently yeah, yeah it's definitely a real skill and I think it's something um, that I would like to come back to and practice a bit more often um, so I have 
at this point um, quite a lot of fibre in my stash I am lucky to have collected over the last few years and I've collected fibre at a rate faster than I can spin through it um, so I've got plenty of fibre to play with and I think maybe um, I don't know maybe once a month it'll be fun just to um, throw a braid onto one of the wheels or onto my spindles and just try and start spinning um, slightly thicker so yeah we'll see if I stick to that um, I always have plenty of plans and not enough time to put them into action um, but here are my singles um, this was the berry colorway from um, Yarny Love and I ended up with about 288 meters from 100 grams so um, not thick <laughs> yarn by any stretch of the imagination probably a sport to sort of DK I haven't actually put it on the wraps per inch tool yet um, but yeah just a really fun um, sort of distraction of a spin uh, I have no idea what I'm going to do with the skein of yarn yet um, maybe I'll save up my yarns that I spin as singles and uh, maybe I'll do a bit of weaving with them who knows um, at this point in time as I say this was a bit of a sort of spin for distraction <clears throat> when I finished the yarn I did try and full it slightly so felt it slightly um, I'm not sure how successful um, I've been at that I've never really tried that before um, but basically you're dunking your finished yarn alternatively between hot and cold water um, to try and get the fibres to stick together um, so that your singles will like last a little bit longer and stick together um, a bit more sturdily um, so yeah I guess the proof will be in the using when I get round to um, knitting or spinning or weaving with this um, so yeah maybe I shouldn't save it maybe I should try um, even if it's just knitting a sample or a swatch just to see how well those singles hold up so yeah that was um, something that I have spun as part of my tour de fleece adventure this week and I have um, two more bra finished braids to share with you. Um, both of these were um, finished before Tour de Fleece started. Um, so last month I probably showed you my spin in progress on my support spindles. Um, I was spinning some lovely Rolags um, dyed by um, spindles and stitches and I finished spinning up those Rolags and plied my yarn together and it's this really fun bright skein um, of um, pinks and yellows and oranges I haven't skeined this up very well it looks quite scruffy um it's not as scruffy as it looks I promise <laughs> there's a few um ends and extra loops hanging out where I've not skeined this up very well uh, but yeah this was entirely spun on my support spindles um and then two plied on my e-spinner and I ended up um, with 262 meters from 72 grams um, which is about 15 wraps per inch um, so again in sort of sport um, almost four ply um, weight for this yarn um, I'm still working on consistency with my support spindles um, support spindles um, generally you will get a woolen type yarn or a semi woolen depending on your fiber prep um, from Rolags um, my fibres were jumbled up so this is a nice sort of woolen yarn and again I just absolutely um, really enjoyed the process um, of spinning on my support spindles for that skein and one more <laughs> one more finished braid to share with you um, I grabbed something earlier on this month off of my spinning cart um, if you watch my video back from the beginning of the year you know that I pulled out a selection of braids from my fibre stash that have been gifted to me over the last few years um, with the intention of spinning through as many of those braids as possible this year and um, I had a week or so before the tour de fleece was about to start and my e-spinner was empty so I decided that I needed to grab a project to pop onto the e-spinner just to keep me going um, in that week or so before the tour started and I got um, sort of spinning on um, my John Arben fibre um, so I grabbed a braid of fibre that was kindly gifted to me by the lovely Caroline and um, I think I have a photo or a short video clip of what the fibre looked like before I started spinning so I shall try to remember to pop that in here. Um, so yeah, it was a beautiful sort of riot of colours with um, some white patches um, spread throughout and I just had no inkling of how this fibre would spin up and I decided to spin a two-ply flat tool with the fibre um, so that means that I split the fibre down in half um, then I split one half of that half of fibre down again and then for the second half of the fibre um, I think I split it in four 
Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure. Um, so basically I was, and then I um, spun the first half, like the, the split in two to one bobbin and then the split in four to another bobbin and then plied those together for a frac what's called a fractal spun yarn um so you're basically sort of jumbling up the color repeats and this is the yarn that i ended up with and <laughs> i'm calling this my unicorn skein because it has just so many um colors uh in this fiber it's just crazy <laughs> Um, I really love how it's turned out. There's lots of um, sort of fun barber polling, which you often associate, I think, with hand spinning. Um, so where the colours are kind of mixing together. There's a few places where the colours kind of um, joined up, but for the most part, it's uh, sort of barber pole all the way. Um, I ended up with a larger set skein and a smaller skein because one of my um, bobbins ran out faster than the other. So when I got to the point that I'd... Um, run out and I only have one bobbin left I wound it up into a center pull ball and just plied it back on itself but um, I don't think there's too much sort of to differentiate um, between the two um, even though I was only spinning from sort of like the same um, sort of bobbin on that last so I think I can definitely mix those two together in a project um, I've ended up with 268 meters. Um, I haven't measured my wraps per inch or weighed the yarn yet. Um, this is quite recently finished, so um, I need to do that before I actually um, put the rest of the stats for that yarn um, up on my um, sort of record keeping page over on Ravelry. So, yeah, that was just a really fun, fun spin. Um, before the start of Tour de Fleece. Um, I believe this fibre is merino. Um, it wasn't labelled though, so I am not sure, and I'm not sure who dyed it either. I don't know if this was one that Caroline um, had in her stash that she gifted for me, or it was, it was one that she dyed herself. But yeah, made for a beautiful, beautiful skein of yarn, and um, I'm sure the perfect project will come along for that at some point. I feel like this video is turning out to be a much longer video than I anticipated so um, I try and keep my videos to around 30-35 minutes but if this one's a bit longer I do apologise. I seem to have quite a lot to show you <laughs> show this month. Um, right, um, spindle spinning. So this is the last um, sort of section. I am in the midst of two spindle spun projects at the moment. Um, so the first, um, I grabbed another quantity of fibre off of my spinning cart. Um, it was a lovely little bump of fiber um, I think about um, 17 18 grams worth that was gifted to me by Kelly of um, Cat's Eye Collective over in Canada and um, in a little gift package that Kelly sent me back I think around Christmas time um, she'd included a little bump of fiber um, and I was in the midst of doing my John Arben and my sort of single spin on my wheels and I was really missing my spindles um, so I grabbed that fiber and um, encouraged by a new support spindle that has been added to my collection, um, I started spinning up this fibre. And I will have a unboxing video for that spindle and you'll see me spinning up some of this fibre too. So um, watch out for that coming at some point in the future. I'm not sure when, um, but it will come. Um, so yeah, I've got my two um, little balls of singles here. I split the fibre roughly in half. As you can see, I think one of my balls is definitely bigger than the other, um, but I'm ready to ply this now. And it was just a really fun um, sort of bit of roving that was uh, this kind of gorgeous blue colour, um, but has all these flecks of sort of colour in them. Um, it almost seemed like it was sort of bits of sari silk or waist um, sort of threads, that kind of thing. Um, and yeah, this was just such a beautiful spin. Um, I've got a picture of the singles um, on my spindles, so which I think is really fun. So I'm going to pop that in for you here. And this should now be quite a quick finish. I just need to ply this. Um, and as I say, it's only, it's less than 20 grams of fiber. So it's not going to take too long before I can um, ply this up into uh, a little, mini skein um but i think um i'm positive i'm almost positive this will end up either in a um knitted gnome project or maybe in some weaving i've got some i think fun weaving plans coming up um over the next couple of months so uh this could end up in one of my woven projects if those plans work out we'll we'll see um, so yeah, that's spindle project number one. Um, and then the second project is a slightly bigger project. And as part of the spindle sum 
spindle spun summer make along that I mentioned earlier. I'm hoping to spin through some um, fibre samples that I have in my stash and I have started um, doing that. I'm trying to sort out this mess messy jumble of spindles that I've got in my hands. Um, so I have been busy um, spinning away on my drop spindles, <laughs> this fun um, collection of yarns, um, which is a blend of um, Manx, Lofton, Silk and Merino. Um, and I pulled out um, all of the colours that I had in the, that same fibre base and have spun those up to um, various spindles from my collection and I was about to start plying these um, when I thought hang on a minute I have some Manx Lofton fibre in my stash that I um, washed and recently carded up into Rolags um, so before I ply these I have decided to grab another couple of my spindles and spin up the um, pure Manx on my um, spindles um, and then I'll do all of the plying because I think um, these will just make some pretty pictures on the spindles um, before plying. And my thought is, because this is um, Manx and this is a Manx blend, is that I will maybe have um, enough yarn to make some sort of combined project with the colours and the uh, sort of natural base colour. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the spinning up of this natural colour um, is what's sort of put the plying of these ones on pause. I hope that makes sense. I feel like I'm waffling a bit. Um, so yeah, spindle some, spindle spun summer, put my teeth in, in progress. Phew, that was a lot. That's everything. Thank goodness. <laughs> right. Um, so yeah, plenty of knitting, plenty of spinning and a little touch of weaving. Please do let me know um, in the comments below what you've been working on in June. Um, did you finish anything? Have you got um, stuck into any big projects? Um, what is um, giving you joy, bringing you joy? What's been bringing you joy throughout the month? Um, I always love to hear about what you've been up to and be inspired by all of the things that the wonderful members of our community here have been making. Um, so yeah, please do let me know um, what you have been working on. Um, in terms of what's coming up here over the next few weeks, I think my video uploading will continue to be um, a little bit more sporadic um, for the next few weeks. Um, we finally are um, getting a visit from James's parents, so we're finally going to be seeing family for the first time in 18 months. Um, both James and I have now both had our vaccines. James's parents have had both of their vaccines too. Um, so they are coming to visit us for a few days. So um, that will obviously um, mean that I don't have um, as much time as I usually would to make and record these videos. So um, I'm aiming to be here once a week, but um, yeah, if I'm a little bit more sporadic than that, then don't worry, it's just I'm busy and hopefully busy doing fun things. <laughs> um, I am planning on making a video chatting about where I'm at with the 12 cast-ons of Christmas for this last year. Now we are past the halfway mark um, in this year. I thought it'd be fun just to revisit that. Um, and in that video, I'll also be drawing the prize for the second quarter um, of that make along. So um, if you have been making along with us, um, after casting on your projects at Christmas time, um, then please do look out for that video. Uh, so yeah, that one will definitely be coming up soon. I've got my spindle unboxing whenever I get to um, finish that. Um, I've got plans for some weaving um, videos. Um, I've also um, just managed to purchase my blending board that I was after. Um, thank you to anyone um, who was able to support that endeavour um, by donating to the channel via coffee. Um, I put coffee money towards that over the last few weeks um, along with some money that I had saved too. Um, so I, I'm so so appreciative of anyone who is able to support the channel um, either via coffee or by joining our Patreon. Um, the I know it's not possible for everyone to support all of the creators out there, um, but um, it really does help me to um, put aside the time to um, make all of the content that I do. So yeah, I appreciate anyone who is able to support in that way. Um, but of course, my appreciation um, goes to everyone who watches, who likes the videos, who subscribes, who leaves comments, who shares that they're watching, because that helps the um, reach of the channel to grow. Um, and yeah, I'm just thankful for all of the love and support that I get um, here um, by posting these videos. Um, yeah, it's just the most joyful part of making these videos. 
so yeah i think that's um a nice happy note to leave things on um i hope you'll join me again for the next video which hopefully will be soon um but until we get to spend time together again i hope you get to do some of the things that you enjoy great big woolly hugs to you all bye for now